G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. Well finally we've got to the installs of Ubuntu 20.04.2 and in this video we're going to be installing in the UEFI mode and dual booting with Windows 10. We're going to be doing it two different ways. We're going to be using the installer first and then we'll be uh, preparing the partitions with Gparted after that. So we're going to do it two different ways of preparation. So the installer is not much of a preparation. You just, you just prepare the existing 30 gig unallocated partition that we created in the previous videos. And we just work with that with the installer. And the installer will create them there and then. Whereas with Gparted, we can do it prior to installing. So there's slightly two different ways you can do it. And I just wanted to feature those two different ways. So let's get on with it. Bit of a jingle. <laughs> so English for me, uh, select your language of choice. And my keyboard layout for me is English US. Now at this point, um, you can do a normal installation where you get all your, the default software that ships with Ubuntu and web browser utilities and media players and so forth. Or you can go for minimal and just get web browser and the basic utilities um, to get you up and running and, and install the things that you want to install rather than the things that come with Ubuntu. The only thing is you probably will get the Firefox web browser there, I would say. Other options are download updates while installing, although people say this will um, take the install a little bit longer, but um, I'm happy to do that. And install third party for graphics and Wi-Fi and so forth and additional media formats. I'm really never taken any notice of what additional media formats are installed through this. I, I know that it gives you good graphics and Wi-Fi support. Media formats, not sure about, but you still got to install your Ubuntu restricted extras anyway after install because Ubuntu does not ship with that. So let's continue. Yes, Ubuntu does not ship with that for legal reasons. Okay, and on here we've got install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager. We can do that, but I think at that point is where Ubuntu and Windows would be sharing the same bootloader. That's what we're trying to avoid. Erase disk and install Ubuntu. That will erase my current Windows install and just install Ubuntu to the whole disk. But we wanna do something else because we're dual booting or the purpose of this is to dual boot. So let's do something else. Now what we need to do is we need to look for our free space that we created, which is this one here. Now in um, within UEFI, we need to create a 512 megabyte FAT32 boot partition to keep it separate from the Windows Boot Manager. So that's the plan. So we can either double click this or we can click the plus button. We'll do both. We'll start off with double click and on here we're going to do 512 and this is all in megabytes. Now we're on GPT, it's UEFI so I think G you have to have GPT I believe under UEFI. I don't know whether you can use MS-DOS but definitely has to be a GPT partition table and that allows you to have more than four primary partitions. I don't know what the maximum is but definitely you can have more than four primaries. So it's 512 megabytes. It's going to be a primary from the beginning of this space and we're going to be formatting it in FAT32. And the mount point will be All right, well that's very interesting because we should get um, EFI system path system boot partition or something as an option here, but uh, we're not getting that. I'm not quite sure why. So we can double click on the free space or we can click the plus button. I'm gonna start with double clicking, we'll show both ways. And it's a GPT partition table. So you, it, all partitions that I make are gonna be primary because on a GPT partition table, you can have more than four primary partitions. Not sure what the maximum is, but you can make more than four. So you can, you can have as many partitions as, as you like as far as um, setting up the Ubuntu 
partitions and the existing windows partitions so there's more than enough opportunity to do so so let's go 512 megabytes we're going to use it as an EFI system partition and we're going to click OK and there we have our 512 EFI partition now we click on the free space we click the plus button I'm going to make a 4096 megabyte partition primary again beginning of this space and that's going to be a Linux swap or swap area now the size of the um, swap uh, for me this is um, an opinion that varies quite a fair bit on the internet I'll only tell you the way I do it for a VM I'll just put 4 gigs in most cases my main system has 32 gigs um, I don't go any more than 8 gig swap once I think I get about above maybe 12 gig and more I just leave it at 8 I, I just leave if I've got if I've got memory up to 8 gigs I will make it my swap the same as my memory up to 8 gigs but if I've got more than 8 gigs I just leave it at 8 gigs it's better to have swap than no swap you can also have a swap file and you don't have to create swap here you can create swap file after install and I think it only uses the space when needed and that space I think is available to your install I think <laughs> don't quote me on that I'll, I'll see if I can leave a link to creating a swap file in the show notes so you can check that out but I'm just going to show you how to create a swap partition here for, for now so let's click OK on that so we've gone from Windows SDA 1, 2, 3 and, and 4 partitions so that, that's uh, the fourth one for Windows then we've started at SDA 5 for ours that we've just created SDA 6 and it will continue in that order so we'll click on the free space again or double click in this case I'm going to make a 20 gig partition 20,480 is a perfect 20 gig make it primary beginning of this space we're going to be using ext4 file system and the mount points going to be root the reason for this is I'm going to be showing you all options now let's just say um, so I forgot to show you something here so what we're going to do is this one here will delete that so if we make a change we can change that if we want or we can hit the minus button to delete that and then we're back to the same free space we've still got our other partitions that we've done our EFI boot partition and our swap still there so just hitting the minus button deletes that partition it's a bit like an undo really so what I wanted to show you was you can use this with the with the size as it is and just continue everything as default and select it as your root partition you can do that and finish it off and all your home folders as in documents downloads music pictures and videos will all be in this root partition or you can have a separate home which is what we're going to do so if you just if you don't want a separate home you just just leave that and use it as the rest of the partition not a problem I'm going to make it 2480 make it exact 20 gig partition make it root partition we'll leave it at primary beginning of this space and xt4 file system click OK now on a one terabyte hard drive if you've um, resized the disk in Windows and made it something like 200 gigs you might want to make Linux like a 50 or 60 gig and then have the rest of the home in the remaining space of 140 or 150 odd gigabytes that works well now we've got the free space and we'll click the plus button to add and we'll finish that off with the rest of the space remaining we'll leave it as ext4 and the mount point will be forward slash home and click OK now by default the installer is going to format this home partition as you can see if you had an existing home partition separate home partition and you had 
data already on that home partition. When it comes to installing, that partition will already be there. You just double click it and select your forward slash home, like so, but don't format it. And as long as you're using the same desktop environment, you can do that. But I've found in the past that if you use different desktop environments, a different desktop environment has different, different um, home structures. So you might find that everything gets a bit weird. So that works best only on upgrading to the same distro with the same desktop environment. And that, that will work well. But if you're using different desktop environment, it, it doesn't work well. You're better off just to have a separate root partition and make a separate data partition. That way the data is untouched, which is how I have my system. Now with the EFI, we need to boot Ubuntu with this SDA5 EFI partition, which device for bootloader installation, SDA5. And that should be it. Um, that's gonna format, that's gonna format, and we're right to install. So let's click install now. And this shows us the changes that we've made and what it's gonna write to the disk. Now partition 5678, which will then after writing the changes, they will change instead of being partition number whatever, they'll become dev SDA5, dev SDA6 and so on. So let's continue. And as you can see here with the two different boot partitions, Ubuntu and Windows remain separate. Perth Australia for me, my real name, And by default, um, the username will be the first name with lowercase. The username has to be lowercase. And the computer name, I'll just call it U for UEFI and VM. Um, so if I had two different computers running Ubuntu on my network and I didn't know the difference between the two, I'll just give them a special name here so they can be identified on my home network. Like I said, a username has to be lowercase, and we choose a password. And continue.
And that is the install complete. And let's restart now and make sure that we get a dual boot situation or grub screen from Linux for the options of Ubuntu and Windows. And there we have it. Windows Boot Manager on Dev SDA 1 and Ubuntu. So let's boot Ubuntu. Our login screen for Ubuntu. And we have our welcome slash first startup screen for Ubuntu itself. And we can connect your we can connect our online accounts if we wish. I'll skip that for now. Live patch is a you can sign up to live patch. You can set up live, which means you can get certain updates that require restarting. Um, but if you sign up to live patch, you don't have to restart to implement those updates. And I think that would be mainly kernel updates, I believe. I'm not 100% sure about that, but that's what that is for. Um, if you want to help improve Ubuntu, you can send uh, the system info to Ubuntu. I won't do that when I'm in a VM. I don't think it's worthwhile. I don't think they would expect me to do that. Otherwise, if I make this video three, four times, they could be getting three, four the same report. <laughs> I'm sure they wouldn't want to be pestered with little things like that. Next, privacy. You can turn on your location services and it allows applications to determine your geographical location. There we have some updates there. Click next. These probably are some of the most popular apps that people probably install within Ubuntu. That's probably why they've displayed them here. And if you want to start installing some applications, you can open your software here and we're done. And there's the updater. That's your software updater there. There is um, some updates there. I'm not going to bother to do the updates. We're going to shut down and make sure that our Windows 10 boots up from our Linux grub screen. And let's go down to Windows Boot Manager. And here we are in the Windows 10 login screen. So let's log into there. And as you can see, we have successfully logged into Ubuntu and also Windows in a dual boot situation. Um, it's not that difficult to do once you know what's going on. Most important thing within the UEFI mode is to make sure that you keep those two boot managers separate from each other. And I might go into a little bit more detail on that in the next part of the video when we do, when we prepare our partitions with Gparted prior to install. So let's shut that down. So once again, we are going to be Going back into the live system again, just thought I'd show you what we do here is try Ubuntu. I don't think I showed that in the first part. And try Ubuntu will bring us into a live desktop like so. Now what we're going to do here is a little bit different now. We're going to be opening Gparted. And some people like to um, work with their partitions in Gparted prior to install. Sometimes I do that, especially when I'm using the Calamari's installer. And that'll be an interesting one when we do Lubuntu. So what we've got here is our unallocated 30 gig partition here. Um, just like before, it's the same system. We've got the um, Windows EFI system partition. That is the boot. As you can see, it's got the boot flags, boot ESP. That's important, that one, that bit there. Um, we've got this Microsoft reserved. So it's SDA 1, 2, 3, and 4. So they're the four partitions for Windows. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be creating our partitions. And if we view the device information, we'll see that the uh, partition table is GPT, which allows more than four primary partitions. And once again, I don't know what the maximum amount is allowed, but we're going to be probably having eight here, with four with the Windows and four with Ubuntu. So it allows us that many and even more so if you need to. I don't know what the maximum is. Somebody out there might know. So what we're gonna do here is we can click on the unallocated space and we can choose partition and new. I like to just right click here and select new. And we're going to make that a 512 megabyte partition, press enter. It's going to be a primary partition and its name will be, if I boot, it's going to be a FAT32. 
and I'm going to call that EFI boot. I'll just put two labels on there. So the partition name and the label and click add and there you can see it's added that there already. So now we've got a green one there for Ubuntu boot and we've got a green one there for Windows boot. Then we'll right click and select new again. We're going to make a 4096 megabyte partition which will be a 4 gig to enter that. That will be a 4 gig partition exactly. It's going to be primary and this is going to be swap. It will be Linux swap and we'll label that swap and we'll add that. So as you can see now the red one there is swap. So they've got different colors for different things. I'm not sure what that gray area is. Unallocated is the gray. So we've got a dark green for boot and we have red for swap black for unknown, Microsoft reserved, and a lighter green or um, what would you call that? Teal or something like that. That color is for the hard drive. This is for the C drive. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be creating a root partition and a separate home partition. Now you don't have to have a separate home. Some people like to do that. And I'll give you the advantages of a separate home. A separate home is if you're going to use the same desktop environment and you're going to use Ubuntu and it's and it's the um, known desktop environment, uh, all desktop environment have certain um, files that it uses for the desktop structure or, or certain settings for the desktop in the home partition. So if you use your home partition and then you install, for example, Linux Mint has Cinnamon, XFCE and Mate. So if you did a separate home for Cinnamon, then you installed the Mate and you used a separate home, your settings are going to be all weird and all over the place because those home settings won't allow for that sep that different desktop environment if you know what I'm if you understand what I'm talking about. Yes, if you're going to be upgrading from Ubuntu all the time, even with the intermediate um, distros, the, the, um, the, the short-term supports, you could do that with a separate home because it's the same desktop environment. All you have to do is install to root and that's all you have to do. So anyway, let's create another new one. I'm going to create a 20,480 partition, which is exactly 20 gig. It's a primary partition. This will be root. It'll be an EXT4 and we'll label that as root as well. Add that. Then we'll right click again and select new and we'll just leave the rest of it as is. Now if we, we could have left the root partition and just left the rest of it as it was, just like we're doing here, just um, rename this, leave it as EXT4. So this will be home and we'll label it as home as well. So that's what we could have done with the root partition is just left the whole lot for root. But we decided to make it 20 gig and leave this small amount just to demonstrate how a, a separate home partition works. Add that. Now as you can see, you've got green for boot, red for swap and dark blue for your root partition and also dark blue for your separate home. So their system partitions, I'm assuming they stay the same color and they've colored windows differently. So as you can see now, it says new partition one, two, three, and four. Now, if you watch this space here, they will change to dev SDA uh, one. Well, actually uh, starting off at windows, it'll probably go from four, then it'll go five, six, seven, eight. That's what it'll do. So let's click apply and apply, and all operations have successfully completed. Let's close that, and new partition now is changed to five, six, seven, and eight. So if you're unsure about which partitions are which when you come to the installer, just write these down so you remember them. I had to do that when I first started because I couldn't get my head around it. <laughs> Some people are pretty quick enough to know that, uh, even if they are new to Linux, just not me. <laughs> 
Um, so what we need to do now is the EFI boot, this is important. We need to right click that and go to manage flags. And for the EFI boot, it needs to have the boot flag and the ESP flag. Once you select the boot, it automatically selects the ESP as well. Now this ESP here, it, uh, what it actually stands for is the EFI, E is for EFI, S is for system, and P is for partition. So it's EFI system partition, that's what it means. So the bootloader knows that it's an EFI boot partition. That's why Windows has the same thing. Now, as you can see now, you've got this boot partition for Windows and you've got this boot partition for, for Linux. Separate boots means that Windows can update that boot manager as much as it likes. It can change the whole structure. It can delete the whole thing and redo it. It's never going to affect your Linux boot. But if they're sharing the same boot partition and then Windows doesn't update, and I doubt whether it does that on purpose, it's just uh, they may need to clear things out and um, change whatever change they've made, they may, they may need to make changes to the boot manager. So if your Linux is sharing that, your Linux boot could be cleared off and uh, because it's sharing with Windows and it may not show up in boot after Windows has done some updates. Now, I've experienced that in the past. That's why it's important to keep these two boot managers separate from each other. And you shouldn't have any problems. Um, after... Um, after managing flags, you don't have to apply. It's already done, as you can see there. So we can now close Gparted. And what we'll do now is we'll start the installer. And we get the Ubuntu little jingle there. <laughs> um, for me, I'm using English language. Continue that. My keyboard is English US. Continue that. And just like before, we're going to choose normal installation unless you want minimal and select your own. So minimal gives you basically a real good working Ubuntu, but um, without all these other things here. And you can choose the things that you want yourself. The download updates will increase the length of install time, but I don't think it's by much. But it's best to do any outstanding updates. But as you've seen in the previous one, there was updates that came up anyway. So install third-party software once again and continue. And once again, we get the same options. Install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager. Like I said, if you choose that, then they're probably going to share the same uh, boot manager, which is what we don't want. This is why we do um, something else. And you can select Erase Disk and Install Ubuntu. That will erase Windows and everything else. Clear off the disk and it will install Ubuntu to the whole disk. We're going to do something else. And we're going to be selecting the partitions that we created. So in this case, five, six, seven, and eight. So we've got our EFI partition, double click that. Um, we don't really need to do anything anyway. Just click OK or cancel. It's all ready to go. Same with swap. Um, we can right click and change or delete. And that the change or delete are these two here. That's delete, that's change. It's the same as right clicking. We don't need to do anything with swap, it will be recognized. Let's double click that, and that will be the same as doing change, like so. It won't allow us to do anything, it's recognized as swap anyway. So we double click SDA7, which is our 20 gig partition. We're going to use that as an EXT4. We're going to format it. Even though we formatted it in Gpart, we'll format it again and it's going to be used as root and click OK. Last of all, we're going to be doing the separate home. Now, like I said, if you're updating your Ubuntu, you can choose EXT4. You can choose your mount point as home and don't format it. If you've got data on your separate home, just don't format it. It'll use the EXT4 partition type and once you select forward slash home and not format it it will just stay the same with your data on there and it'll update Ubuntu on the root partition which is this one here and you've still got everything within your forward slash home. Me personally I, I like to use a separate data partition 
and keep the home as part of the root partition and then I delete all those home folders and I create links to the data partition. That's how I do it. In this case, it's a newly created partition, so we're gonna format it for forward slash home. Make sure it's nice and clean through the Ubuntu installer. Now, most importantly, we wanna boot with this SDA5, which is the partition we created in Gparted for booting Ubuntu. So we need to, the device for bootloader installation is going to be SDA5. It's this one here. And we can install now. And it will show us um, what we've done. And as you can see, partition six, seven, and eight, they are the names of the partition. The real names this time, it's uh, dev SDA six, seven, and eight. And we can continue. And Australia Perth is my location. Continue that, put my real name. Once again, we'll go Ubuntu 20.04, uh, U for UEFI, and it's a VM. And the reason why I put U is because when I do the legacy one, I'll put L for legacy so I know which one's which. Not that I'll be running these at the same time. And lower, all lowercase is my username. You can change your username if you want. I normally just leave mine as Colin, password, and continue. And that is the install complete. Let's restart now and, and make sure we still have the same boot menu options as before. And there we have it, Windows Boot Manager and Ubuntu. So let's boot Ubuntu. And there's our login screen. And the same as before, you can select your online accounts. Let's skip that, live patch. And like I said before, just in case you're not watching um, the first part of the video, Live Patch allows you to do updates, which in some cases need to have a restart, but Live Patch allows you to install the updates without a restart. So that, that's what that's all about. Probably mainly the kernel, I would think. Um, send information to Ubuntu to help improve Ubuntu. I normally would, but I'm not on real hardware, so I'm not going to bother. And privacy, location services, allows applications to determine your geographical location. And then um, it looks to me like they're displaying a certain amount of, what can you say, popular apps, probably. They've probably um, curated a few apps that are probably most popular installed in Ubuntu, maybe. And they've got a little button here to move pages and that's those software there. And if you want to install, start installing software now, you can do so by opening the software center with this button down the bottom here, bottom left-hand corner. And we click done and we are done. We've got some updates there and we did uh, install updates during the install, but as you can see, there's still updates pending after install. So like before, we're not going to install those updates. We're going to power off and restart and we're going to select Windows from the boot menu and make sure that Windows is booting. Make sure that we've done it correctly within Gparted. And there's our Windows login screen. Let's log into Windows. And there we have two successful boots, um, Ubuntu and Windows in a dual boot situation. And that concludes the Ubuntu installation dual booting with Windows 10 in UEFI mode. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting and informative. So join me in the next video where I'll be doing all this again in legacy mode this time, and there'll be some minor differences. So thanks for joining me, and I shall see you in part six.